The Honorable Prime Minister John Rusano, the Honorable Speaker of the House Representative Larry Woods, and the Honorable President of the Senate, Colleen Change Sandford. The Honorable Leader of the Opposition, Shai Barrow. Distinguished members of the National Assembly, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is so wonderful to be in Belle Pound again. I cannot believe it has been five years since I last saw you, and actually we last saw one another. This is too long in my opinion. I want to begin my talk by thanking Prime Minister Brissano, Speaker Barry Woods of the House of Representatives, and President Trent Sandiford of the Senate for inviting me to speak at your National Assembly. I have very fond memories of my last trip to Belize. I visited Taiwan Street, where our embassy stands. I also remember meeting aspiring young Belizeans and was very happy to offer scholarship for their studies in Taiwan. I remember thinking these bright minds will eventually serve as bridges for our friendship in our shared future. I also remember visiting the Museum of Belize, seeing the drawings of slave ships and hearing dreadful stories of the slave trade. What our two countries share is the strength and courage to rise from our challenging past and make our present and future free, bright, and prosperous. Therefore, I must tell you again, I'm delighted to be back in your beautiful country. I would really have loved to come to Belize earlier. However, most of us were grounded by the COVID-19 pandemic. And as we work diligently to move towards the post-pandemic era, more challenges await us. For example, climate change, economic downturn, inflation, and most challenging of all, expansionist threats from authoritarian regimes. The people of Taiwan face constant threats and pressure from the neighbor on the other side of the Taiwan Strait. While Taiwan's relationship with democracies around the world have grown stronger in recent years, we continue to be excluded from participating in international organizations and serving as a productive member of the international community. From international forums to meetings held by international organizations, such as United Nations, WHO, ICAO, and under the UNFCCC, Belize has helped give voice to the 23 million people of Taiwan. I want to say thank you. Not only that, Belize continues to be Taiwan's strongest and most powerful advocate for our international participation. Moreover, Last May, in this very chamber, your National Assembly members unanimously passed a motion to support Taiwan's participation in international organizations. And a motion supporting democratic Taiwan was also passed a few days ago. On behalf of the people of Taiwan, I want to take this opportunity to express our sincere gratitude to the government of Belize and all the members of the House and the Senate. Your unwavering friendship and support means so much to us. Thank you. Belize has accomplished quite a lot over its history. And as a great, grateful friend, Taiwan is honored to, pay, uh, to play a role in assisting Belize's national development through projects on infrastructure, healthcare, 
agriculture, disaster management and prevention, information and communications technology, and education. In fact, I am very pleased to note that over the past two years, Taiwan and Belize have been able to step up our bilateral cooperation to help make everyday life here even more convenient. For example, road, upgrade, road upgrades will connect people from one region to another. We are also working together to bring clean water to rural areas. More importantly, in order to better the learning environment for Belize's next generation, we are supporting programs to provide nutritious food and internet access to schools. In addition, an upgrade to provide more comprehensive healthcare facilities on Belizean islands, the San Pedro, San Pedro General Hospital will soon commence. Our efforts do not stop here. Through our joint Women Endowment Projects, Belizean women are able to receive vocational training and financial support to fulfill their entrepreneurial aspiration. To this date, the program has directly assisted over 700 women and benefited more than 2,000 people in Belize. The ICDF Scholarship and the MOFA Taiwan Scholarship have also brought 500 Belizean students to Taiwan to attend schools. It is also my hope to welcome even more students to come study in Taiwan. These projects, one ranging in scope, a testament to our close cooperation and substantive contribution to Belizean society. As Belize's 10th largest trading partner, we look forward to opening up even more avenues for cooperation. Since the Taiwan-Belize Economic Coalition Agreement took effect last January, Belizean exports to Taiwan in 2023 increased to 317% of the amount in 2021. That is 3.24 million US dollars. One such example is Marie Shop's hot sauce, which is already very popular in Taiwan and already one of my personal favorites. Congratulations. <laughs> Steps are also being taken to realize the potential of Belize seafood industry. A letter of intent was signed last year between companies from our two countries for the import of two million US dollars worth of Belizean lobsters. Our government is working to facilitate and accelerate the import of marine products from Belize so that more delicious Belizean, Belizean seafood can make it onto Taiwanese dinner tables. And as we speak, our coffee and cacao mission is exploring opportunities for cooperation with your country. Spurred on by the Taiwan-Belize Economic Cooperation Agreement, our economies can look forward to even closer engagement. Even though our countries are thousands of miles apart, our connection is intimate and strong. We share some familiar history by emerging from colonial rule and rising above our challenging past. Now, we uphold the values of democracy and face the challenges to our existence without hesitation. Both our country's success is testament to what courage, hard work, determination, and diligence can achieve. And our relationship is built on genuine partnership between our governments, our people, and our businesses. My visit to Belize has solidified my confidence that our relationship will continue to stand strong for decades to come.
Let me conclude my address by reiterating what I said here five years ago. The, re the friendship between Taiwan and Belize is not built on empty promises or the political whims of our leaderships. This is a friendship that for the past 30, 30, 34 years has led to results that have benefited people from both our countries. While we recognize that there are countries that seek to insert that wedge into the, this friendship, we have remained close because of our common values and our shared vision for a more prosperous and peaceful future. We will also continue to work together to demonstrate that democracies help one another and we deliver. Here, in the presence of true friends, please allow me to reaffirm Taiwan's steadfast commitment to our bilateral partnership. I want to once again thank Prime Minister Rizano, Speaker Woods, President Chen Sandiford, Leader of the Opposition Barrow, and all members of the National Assembly for your hospitality and for inviting me to address you here today. Thank you. Thank you so much.